else. I never wanted to be in the spotlight. I just kind of wanted to be in the back with everyone else. I was being bullied in school, mainly for just being short and just like looking a lot younger than all the other classmates. Of course, when you're young, it's hard to deal with bullying. I'm Sky Jackson, and today I'm unfiltered. I first fell in love with makeup when I had just turned 13. I was watching a bunch of YouTubers like Patrick Starr and all these amazing people. And I was like, you know what? I want to try that. So I remember going to CVS and getting one of those like really cheap eyeshadow palettes and I use it for everything like my eyebrows, my cheeks, my eyeshadow, literally anything I could get out of it. And I really didn't look good, but to me it looked good. Everyone was like, ooh, those brows. And I'm like, yeah, they look amazing, but they did not. I grew up as a child model and actress. I was born in Staten Island and I've lived in every borough except for Queens. But when I got to an age where I could speak up for myself, I really did love it. I was going through a struggle at that time, sometimes not being able to know like if we'll have money to get to a certain appointment, but I feel like all the hard work was worth it. I always just knew I wanted to be an actress. I knew just from watching different TV shows and movies, like for instance, Raven Simone, when I would see her on TV, I felt like, wow, like she's a young black girl and she can do it, I can do it. And she was really inspiring for me. Drew Barrymore, I would watch her, especially like an E.T. and I thought she was such a fantastic actor. And I mean, of course at that point she was older, but on screen she was younger and I really looked up to her too. So I always kind of knew that's what I wanted to do. I didn't know how, but I knew that I, that was my niche and that I was gonna go for it. I am stuck on being a brand who's being a stuck on me. It was pretty crazy for people to recognize me from the Band-Aid commercial. Like I never would think that people would be like, oh, you're the girl who would sing that Band-Aid song. A lot of the time, especially when I went back to school after filming that commercial, every classmate would make me sing the song and it was like to a point where it was annoying. For me, it was hard to balance the two. I love being in front of the camera. I love doing my job. That was my passion. But off camera, I just wanted to be me again, like who I was, just a fun girl who loved to have fun and play with her Barbie dolls and not be recognized all the time. And I was just never that type of person who liked attention, even when it came to birthday parties or celebrations. I never wanted to be in the spotlight. I just kind of wanted to be in the back with everyone else. I probably was really okay with being recognized Sorry, at the age of like 12, 13, that's when I got comfortable. And then I was being bullied in school, mainly for just being short and just like looking a lot younger than all the other classmates, which for me, I was like really sad about that. And I hated being the shortest. Of course, when you're young, it's hard to deal with bullying, but I did have a thicker skin than maybe some people would. Maybe that's because I did grow up in New York. I feel like if I made that decision to stay home back in New York, I probably wouldn't be where I am today now, but I feel like I did pick the best choice. I mean, for one, I've always wanted to move to LA. That was like on my vision board growing up. And also being on Disney Channel was another visionary thing I had. And I feel like I've reached so many people and I've gotten so many opportunities and I feel like I wouldn't have gotten those if I didn't make that move. Hey Jesse, you wanna be my new nanny? Now that the show's over, I still do keep in contact with all of my cast members, maybe not as much as we used to because, I mean, we did see each other every single day, Monday through Friday, but we still do like text sometimes or like comment in each other's posts or we'll see each other um, at different events, but we always will stay in contact. But I mean, me and Debbie, we have had certain conversations, like personal conversations, and even my other co-star Peyton Liss, since I didn't know her since I was two. So we would like talk all the time. But I never got to have a full conversation of how, you know, being a child star is. We haven't fully gotten deaf, but that's something maybe I should do. We should all have like a sit together and chat about it. I think that's a good idea. Hello, I'm Luke and you are? When Cameron got casted for Gamer's Guide, I was really sad because he was leaving and I wouldn't be on set with him all the time and I loved him around. He was just like so sweet. But I was sad that it was like, okay, this like boy show and Dizzy XE. But then again, I was happy for him and I didn't really take offense to it. I mean, certain boys would rather watch Disney XD than some Disney Channel shows and I know I have a preference of things. So for me, it wasn't 
like, oh, that's weird or oh, that's a bad thing. Um, I was like, okay, cool, that's good for him. And I was really happy too, cause he was still like on the same lot. So I'd always see him. I would walk to his stage, see him all the time. And his cast members are really nice. So yeah, I was really happy for him, but I was also sad that he was like moving on to the next channel. Family forever, hashtag. <laughs> I got to meet Raven Simone a couple times. I was so excited. The first time I met her was at Hollywood Center Studios, and that's where we used to film Jesse and Bunked. And I was super excited because I found out that she was on Casey Undercover, which was Zendaya's show at the time. And we are really close. Like I could literally walk to their stage. And I didn't get to tell her that she was like my biggest inspiration growing up. But, you know, I got to see her a lot after that. Then Raven's home came to the same lot I was filming at. So I would be eating lunch and she would just be walking by and she would always say hi to me. And she was always very sweet, very genuine and down to earth person. And I still haven't told her that yet, but maybe the next time I see her, I will. <laughs> so I got to meet Justin and he was so, so nice. Like the whole time he was talking to me and playing with me and I was only 10 years, I think I was 10 at the time. And I was such a huge fan of his, I still am now. And I was so surprised. And then when he left me that note, I was so happy that like Justin Bieber snuck in my room. I was like, oh my goodness, like you couldn't tell me anything. I was so happy. I hung that sign up in school, then I took it home. And then after that, I've seen him just like at different events, like Kids' Choice Awards. And I remember the next time I saw him, like they were like, everyone was like, oh, Justin Bieber, he's coming. And I darted out the door. And um, I got to say hi to him and he remembered who I was. I haven't seen him since, but he's such a sweet, genuine person and I'm sure he still is. It was really cool to be a part of history with my mom, with Parenting Magazine. And you know, at that time, there wasn't a lot of black you know, kids on covers, especially a mom and a daughter. And for us to be like one of the first was like pretty awesome. And to really see and prove those people wrong, like people wouldn't think that if you put black people on a cover, it would sell out, but ours did. And I feel like we are breaking stereotypes, which is a great thing. And my mom has always just wanted me to be who I was born to be and whoever I want to be and aspire to be in life. Um, so my mom is really supportive and I love that. And yeah, when it comes to my natural hair, she's like, do what you want to do with it. And she always taught me at a young age to embrace my natural self and love my natural self no matter what. And I feel like I do that. I feel like it's fun to like have dress up sometimes and try like different hair. But at the end of the day, I'm happy what God gave me with. Sometimes bullies will send you hate on social media because it's easy to forget that there's a person on the other side of the screen. For me, I mean, growing up at a young age in the limelight and on social media, I joined social media. I joined Twitter when I was 10 and I got my Instagram when I was 11. So when I joined Instagram, I did notice like a lot of hate comments or people would just like nitpick at my appearance just to be funny. And a lot of people go through this, like the most popular people do. and. For me, at being a young age, I didn't understand why these people were saying these things and I would get really, really sad. And it's like when people continuously tell you things, you start to believe it. So when people would call me ugly, like I was like, am I ugly? Am I this? Am I that? And even still now, sometimes I'll, you know, think certain things about myself. But then I'm like, you know what? No, like it doesn't matter what anyone says on social media. You're supposed to love yourself no matter what. And I do, but I feel like Every person goes through them and sometimes it can be worse than others and especially I feel like it was a little bit worse for me just because I, all eyes were on me at many, many times. But now I'm starting to learn how to love myself no matter what and not care what anyone says. Okay, I think I'm done. Beauty has evolved for me in several ways. I feel like you don't have to just be beautiful by your appearance, just how you are in the inside. So I feel like I feel most beautiful when I don't have anything on and I'm just like myself and I don't have to put on a bunch of makeup. But I feel like as long as you think you're beautiful, then you're beautiful. My book is just a big chunk of my life. But even since then, things have changed. You know, traumatic things have happened. But I feel like I love my book how it is. I wouldn't change anything 
and it, I would tell someone, you know, it's gonna be hard, and for me, it was hard, but I've gotten through my lowest moments just surrounding myself by really, really good people and strong people who will uplift me on my darkest and saddest days, which I hate having those, but everyone goes through it. And I feel like if you have a great support system, you'll probably evolve and feel better. And I have. The greatest compliment I've ever been given is that I'm just like so real, like just who I am and natural. Like I don't put on a persona like, what you guys see is what you get. What you see on my YouTube channel is what you get. If you see me like goofing off, that's how I really am. If you see like, even when it comes to like, oh, I didn't clean my room, that's how I really am. Like I'm not a perfect person. So I like to show people that side of me, but I'm just who I am. That's it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. That was so fun. <laughs>